All right, so we're talking about independent probability. And really, there is absolutely nothing different about independent probability that you haven't seen already. We've done it for the past couple of days where you've got more than one event that's happening. So if you've got more than one event happening, what operation do you do with those probabilities? Multiply. Multiple events, multiplication is your operation. So make sure you're paying attention to that. I broke it down to where we're only focusing on independent events right now. Tomorrow, we'll focus on dependent events, which is a little bit more difficult. Okay, now all of this is already in your notebook. You guys glued it in already this morning, so let's just go ahead and go over it. We're going to split these up, these different probabilities apart. Now, the first thing I do want to tell you, though, independent, boys, when they talk about independent events, the idea of independent means that there is absolutely no effect that one activity has on the other. No effect. So if I were to take this die and then take this spinner, if I spin this spinner and I land on whatever it lands on, what is it going to be? Lands on four. Is that going to affect how I roll this die? No. no. It's not going to have any effect on how I roll the die. The die can also land on four. They have no effect on each other. Now, if I roll the die and I land on five, does that determine how I, what I'm going to land on the next time? No. Is it impossible for me to land on five again? No. You can still land on five. So rolling the die, hey, there you go, landed on five again. Rolling the die has absolutely no effect on itself. When I roll it and roll it again and roll it again, it does not change what the possible outcome is going to be. It's always going to have a probability of one out of six for the next outcome. Okay? Same thing with um, the probability of me having to get gas in my car has no effect on the probability that it's going to rain today, right? They have nothing to do with each other. One, one probability is completely separate from the other probability. Those are independent. So if you think independent means you don't need anything to tell you how to do something, right? You're an independent person. You have nobody directing you on what you're supposed to do. It's the same thing with independent events. Nothing is directing the outcome that will happen for the other event. So all you have to do is split these probabilities apart. So probability that event M is going to happen. And then you multiply it by the probability that event N is going to happen. That's all you are doing. You're separating the probabilities apart and multiplying them. So for here, we've got these two spinners off to the right, one spinner that's labeled one through eight, another spinner that has letters in it, A, Bs, and Cs. So if we spin the two spinners, again, spinner, the number spinner has no effect on the letter spinner. In fact, the number spinner has no effect on the number spinner. The letter spinner has no effect on the letter spinner. So if I wanted to have the probability of spinning a four. Over here on my spinner, what's the probability that it's going to land on the number four, Trevor? One eighth. The four only occurs one time out of eight total numbers that are located on here, or eight total sections. So it's one eighth for the probability of four. Now again, we're going to split it up and find the probability that event C is going to happen. So we look at this spinner with the C's on it. What's that going to be, Muhammad? One six. one six, right? C is only occurring one time out of the six sections that are located on here. So it's one out of six. And all you have to do is multiply them. So one eighth times one six, and that's going to give you a one out of 48 chance. Now the nice thing, again, you do not have to simplify your probabilities ahead of time because if you just type them in the calculator and hit enter, 
it'll simplify your answer for you. That's the nice thing about just plugging it into your calculator. Okay, let's take a look at number two. The probability that the first spinner is going to land on a one. What's that probability going to be? One over eight. Good. The probability that the second spinner is going to land on A. Three out of six, right? There's three A's. Three A's on the spinner out of six total sections on the spinner. So three over six. And yes, somebody said one half, and that's perfectly fine, but you don't have to simplify it ahead of time. You can type it in as one over eight and three over six, and it's going to give you what? Simplified version. The simplified version, which is one over 16. It'll simplify it for you. Okay? Yes, Harmon. You could still do one half. You can do one eighth times one half and it'll give you one sixteenth as well. It will simplify it for you. So even if you don't simplify it and you use your calculator, it'll simplify it for you. Now, if you don't have a calculator, yeah, you need to make sure you simplify. Okay? All right, let's do one more together. Probability of an even. An even. So if I'm talking about even, what numbers am I talking about, Julian? Oh, you have a question? Okay, wait. Well, because you see how three over six can be simplified, right? They're both divisible by three, and that would give you one half. So that means the same thing that, hey, if I multiply one times three and get three, well, eight times six gives me 48, but 48 is divisible by three. See, if because three times 16 is 48. So it would simplify it eventually. Now, can you answer my question? What numbers on here are considered to be even numbers? Very good. Two, four, six, and eight. So two, four, six, and eight are my even numbers. So how many numbers is that? Four total numbers. There are four total numbers out of the eight numbers on there, or one half, okay, if you decide you wanted to simplify ahead of time. Probability of C, well, we already found the probability of C before. What's the probability of C? One over six. So probability of C is one over six. The probability of an even is 4 over 8. And then again, we just multiply them and we're going to get 1 12th. Very good. Okay, what about my odd numbers? What numbers on that spinner are odd, Kingston? 1, 3, 5, and 7. Good. So the probability that I'm going to spin a number that's an odd number is what? Four over eight. There's four numbers <coughs> out of the eight. That's my odd. Okay, probability of A. How many A's? Three over six. Good. Multiply those and what do we get? One fourth. All right, I want you guys to try five and six on your own. Try five and six on your own. Try five and six on your own. Do problem five and six, yes.
Because it's real. It is. Remember, the calculator will simplify it for you. Serious, what did you get for problem five? Five out of 24, very good. So when we're talking about numbers that are greater than three, that means that we're talking about the numbers four, five, six, seven, and eight. That happens to be five numbers. That happens to be five numbers out of the eight that are greater than three. Okay, then B, the probability of B is going to be two out of the six, because there's two Bs out of six numbers. So when you multiply that, you're gonna get five out of 24. Okay, problem number six, Alex, one six. Very good, one six. So the probability that you're gonna get a number that is less than five. Less than five, that means you're talking about four, three, two, and one. So you got four numbers out of the eight that are less than five. Then probability of B, again, we just found that, that was two out of six. So you're just gonna multiply those together. That's gonna to give you one out of six or one over six. It is simplified. Four over eight times two over six will give you one six in your calculator. Go ahead and try um, these ones. I know it says one through four, but it's actually seven through 10. Go ahead and try seven through 10 on your own using this new spinner here and a number cube, which means what? It's, it's one through six, which is a die, right? A six sided die. So you're talking about rolling a number cube and then spinning the spinner on the right side. You should know what a number cube at this point looks like, right? Like the die? Yeah, it's a die. Uh, just as a reminder, if you need it up at the top, what are vowels? A, E, I, O, U, so vowels are A, E, I, O, U, consonants are everything else. <laughs> vowels are A, E, I, O, U. Huh? Those are the letters that are called vowels. Everything else. Consonants are everything else. So in the alphabet, in the, the language alphabet, A through Z, the letters A, E, I, O, U are vowels. The rest of the letters are called consonants. Having to explain what a vowel and a consonant is every single year, multiple times a year, is just painstaking. Okay. Oh, you mean out loud? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. Sirius and Julian, sit down. All right, let's go over it. Muhammad, tell me what you got for number seven. Thank you. Shh. Quiet. One out of 24. So five, the probability of a five. That means we want the probability that it's going to roll a five on the number cube. That only happens one out of six times. 
Okay, the five only occurs one time out of the six numbers on the number cube. A vowel, just like we said before, vowels, that would be A. The probability that A is going to be happening. So the probability that a vowel is going to occur is one out of four, because A only occurs one time out of the four. Then you multiply them, you get one over 24. Okay, problem number eight. We're going to go with Joel. 3 over 8 is correct. So here, probability of an odd number, that would be a 1, 3, and 5 on the number cubed. That is three numbers. Shh. That's three numbers out of six. Then the probability of a consonant. So the consonants on here are B, C, and D. Those are our consonants. So the probability of a consonant is going to be three-fourths. Then you just multiply them. That gives you three-eighths. Okay, problem number nine, Harmon. Three-eighths. Because you keep talking, that's why. Your prime numbers. Your prime numbers, remember we talked about those, those are numbers that are only divisible by itself in one. So the only even prime number is a two, the rest of them are odd, so three and five, two, three, and five, those are your prime numbers. So the probability of prime is going to be three out of six. A, listen one more time. A prime number is divisible by one and itself, and those are the only numbers it's divisible by. By one. So can you do two divided by one? Yes. Can you do 2 divided by 2? Yes. Can you divide 2 by anything else? No. By itself or 1. Same thing with 3. 3 can only be divided by 1. It can only be divided by 3. It has no other divisors. Okay? Probability of not A. Not A means that it's talking about B, C, and D. So that's 3 out of 4. So you multiply those together, you're going to get 3 eighths. Last one, Kristen. 1 over 6. Probability of 1 over 6. So greater than 2. Greater than 2. That means that we're talking about 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those are the numbers that are greater than 2. Julian, hun. So the probability that we're going to get a number that's greater than 2, that's going to be 4 out of 6. The probability that you're going to get a D on the spinner, that's 1 out of 6. Multiply those together and you're going to get 1 6. I'm sorry, not 1 out of 6. This is 1 fourth, my bad. That's going to give you 1 6. All right, the next page, page 37, is your homework. That's what you're working on right now. You've got plenty of time. You've got 32 minutes to be able to work on it.